your discretion. Hey everybody, it's the Fobra. And today I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, you know, you watch the motorcycle industry and they come out with all these new um, products and you think about, you know, what kind of drives them to create such things. Um, all kidding aside, you look at the ZX-14R, the new one. I mean, that's a incredible, incredibly powered Hypersport. Kawasaki uh, chose to put a good amount of money into that program. And now they have the fastest, biggest, and baddest motorcycle out there. And <clears throat> we'll see if that kind of pays off with the, uh, as far as sales go. And you look at what they did with the Ninja 300. You know, they, they upped the displacement, upped the power, upped everything about that motorcycle. And it has paid off really well because that Ninja 300 is selling uh, amazingly. And it's a great motorcycle in its own right. Uh, Honda, as I talked about, the 500 triple uh, triplets. The CBR 500R, the, CBR, the CB 500X, and the CB 500. I don't know. Hey, how you doing? idiot um you know you got those they developed that whole entire program and they're selling very well matter of fact i just got a comment from somebody who lives in thailand i believe where they're produced and they said he said that they're selling like like hotcakes um which is really cool um but then again that's where they're produced and with the new you know and, and you know it was all about the new licensing restrictions so what's next um as americans we've always had that bigger is better mentality i've spoken about it before so we 250 wasn't enough we needed a ninja 300 we needed more power um but what about scooters um I, i've been to new york city i was in new york city what three times that week and I saw a ton, a ton of scooters. We rode through Williamsburg, Brooklyn to go over to Williamsburg Bridge to go in the city. And a ton of scooters because you know what? Scooters make sense. They make sense in a metropolitan area. They're cheap. They're good on gas. They're easy to park. They have pretty much everything that you need from transportation. And, um, but let's face it. Scooters are boring. They're not exciting looking for the most part. The only scooter that I really like um, and for, it's for a weird way, is that one that, uh, like, Zone Televisions has. He has a Honda Metropolitan 50. Which I think it's a cool bike, a, a, a cool scooter. I would actually love to get it for my wife because it has that classic Vespa look. But <coughs> because it has the classic Vespa look, I actually like it a lot. But if you look at... Oh, that sounds nice. When you look at the scooters that are out there, they are predominantly boring. Uh, I just changed his visor. This one's whistling a little bit. I had a I have a spare visor. Um, yeah, they're predominantly boring. So, what, what's you know what's a person to do? Well, Honda came out there with this Grom, and I really like it. I mean, it's like three thousand dollars. It's a one twenty five cc, which is small for a bike but big for a scooter. But it looks like a bike. The seat height I think is around thirty inches or something. I'll probably throw a little annotation somewhere saying some specs on it, but it's like i said it's more like a, a big scooter than a small bike um it has that kind of naked street fighter look up to it if you look at it real quick you'd swear it was like i don't know maybe an sv 650 ish thing or a yamaha fc8 is another bike that's going away the fc8 but then again you have to you know you have to think of what's yamaha thinking they're coming out with the fc9 the triple you know research or market research supports this they're not going to dump millions of dollars without knowing that there's a market for it my question is whether or not the scooter market is going to embrace the, the Honda Grand. I, I freaking love it. I do. I think it's awesome. And I would love, love to get one. Um, just as a commuter. I mean, it's got to be amazing on gas. And it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, you know, a nice five mile an hour wheelie on that thing. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. No, we're letting the truck come in. Yeah, you want to give them 150 to 300 feet to turn. That's good. That's called. That's courtesy. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, so the, the Grom is the first thing. The Grom looks really cool. And I'm wondering, you know, y y you people out there with, your, with bikes like me, would you ride a Honda Grom? Mark says I'm crazy. I would. I mean, I wouldn't have it as my primary motorcycle. That's, there's no way in, in hell I do that. But I would keep it as a secondary motorcycle, like after this. You know, this would be my fun bike uh, and, you know, sport touring bike and whatever, riding bike. But that would be a nice commuting bike. So I, th I think Honda's going to, I don't know, my prediction is that Honda's going to do better than they thought. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of people in the city. Especially the people who want to be kind of trendy because it is a cool looking bike and their ads are definitely catered to that. Um, the other thing that I'm, that I'm kind of excited about is cycle gear. We don't have cycle gears in New York. For some reason, big name retailers don't like coming to New York. Um, I remember auto parts stores. We had all these you know, small chain auto parts stores. Uh, we didn't have any of the big chains. And then about, I don't know, 10 years ago, we started getting in like um, Advanced and uh, AutoZone and Pep Boys. But it took them a while to get here, whereas everybody else seems to have them for so long. So cycle gear, the closest cycle gear, I think, was in like Edison, New Jersey or something. And, you know, it's, that's pretty far. Now they're going to have one in Hicksville, Hicksville, New York, around 107. Um, I'm excited about that for some reasons, and I'm not for other others. Um, I'm excited about cycle gear coming because it'll be kind of cool to have that kind of a, you know, that kind of a retailer here. Or motorcycles I'm really excited because I know cycle gear has monthly bike nights and that's something we don't have here on Long Island as far as I know I mean there's some car nights but nothing like bike nights so hopefully they'll do something like that um, what I'm not excited about is that it might wipe out a lot of the small businesses and that really sucks I mean you know I talked last time about that that shop that I use and they do sell accessories and I've never bought really accessories from them because they can't match the online retailers but you know, I'm sure they do get a, a something of a, a little bit of business. Um, so, you, you, you know, whatever they're little they're getting is going to get uh, a piece of that's going to get cut away by cycle gear now. But. Hi. I'm going to wake some of these people up. I know it's not that early in the morning. So that's something to think about. Is cycle gear is cycle gear ready for New York? And is New York ready for cycle gear on Long Island? But I called there and I called about, I don't know, I called about a month ago. The guy had no idea what I, when it would open. Then I called last week. I was like, when is this thing opening? You know, the season is going to be coming to an end or, you know, the riding season for some of you or some people, I guess. And they said within a month. So that's pretty cool. You know, I'm looking forward to going down there and checking it out. So... That's that. So we got cycle gear. We got the Grom. Oh yeah, I got my uh, Cena SMH10 Bluetooth headset. Love it. Um, we used it on a ride. We ended up riding out to Connecticut last weekend, and they came in real handy. Mark and I have them. Uh, riding buddy Johnny Diesel just picked one up. Um, when the Bwam boys came through, I was trying to decide between that and this Scala Rider Q3 because the G9 is just priced out of the the atmosphere for me um, and he had a SMH 10 and Revzilla really recommended it and I started comparing the specs and it looked like you know what the SMH 10 is a much better buy um, <coughs> for the money and the features that it has and it was it's great you know I used everything we used the mp3 player we used the uh, I used the intercom and I used the phone and it's pretty darn clear you know um, double t90t just did a review of his I think he had the shark brand and uh, he really liked it. I love when people find their brake pedal. It's like an epiphany. Ah! Brake pedal. So, yep. So I'm gonna do some. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna do something with that. I'm thinking about doing a dual vlog, or because I was gonna do a review, but you know, Double T did a pretty good review on it. So, I don't know. Oh, my paint's coming. I ordered paint for my. My little seat cal project. I picked up a seat cal for this, and I ordered the paint. It should actually be here today, which is going to be cool. And I'm going to have that hopefully in a tech article as well. So you know what? We're moving. We're busy. Summer's approaching its end. I don't want to say it's coming to a close because this is me. Often people say that, but it's uh, yeah, plenty of riding weather left to do. But I don't know about summer. 
All right, well, I hope you're all enjoying your ride out there. And, uh, yeah, that's an update here. See ya. Ah, oh, what a badass. <laughs>